Hello and welcome back. Today I thought we would talk about something that is actually quite important and uh, kind of fun to do with game dev. It is a really good first step when you want to start creating a new project or when you want to kind of brainstorm out a project and it allows you to keep things very contained and keep the scope kind of in view so you never end up expanding scope too much to the point where you just can't finish the project, right? You, you want to keep things realistic. Now, the best and easiest way of doing that when you start a project is to come up with what's known as a design document or a game design document. Now a design document, I've got a couple or I've got a couple and I'll show them to you. A game, a game design document is basically a document that states the theme, the mechanics, a rough breakdown of your game, how players are supposed to go about completing things and other breakdowns of how you want to actually implement other certain individual things. Now we'll show that right now. So if I uh, come down to my Notion, this is always the first step of uh, game development things for me. This is a tower defense game that I actually came up with on stream with uh, some of your help. Yeah, quick little thing. If you want to help me come up with these or if you want to take part in some of the projects that I design, every day that I'm live, my uh, schedule is over on the Discord, which there is a link in the description. But every time I'm live and I'm actually working on either a new project or the current one, I always have this on the side. And sometimes I like having people's help and assistance. So, you know, if you want to pitch in, come help. But yes, so this, tower defense game. The, I came up with an idea for a tower defense game. I misspelled defense. No, I did not. Yes, I did, kind of. Right, we'll, we'll ignore that. First was the genre of the game. Well, it's going to be a tower defense. It's going to be a wave survival and an ARPG. Now, the other form of this genre stuff is, you know, is it a horror game? Is it a adventure action, right? So that's our genre. Now you'll notice here there are three distinct things, tower defense and wave survival. These two are basically the same thing. Then ARPG, so action role playing game. Uh, how does that work into tower defense? Well, if I scroll down a little bit before we continue, I came up with this. This is the little breakdown I did where I broke down the tower defense, like a rough tower defense game, how it kind of plays out. So you place towers, you spawn enemies, you have some wave management, some basic pathing and some tower upgrades, right? It's all about having enemies path to one point or point A to point B, and you have to stop them from getting to point B. So that's the tower defense stuff. Now, from an ARPG like breakdown like standpoint, I took a very good look at Path of Exile 2. It has a skill system, WSD movement or point and click movement, some classes, skill trees, gearing and itemization, some random generation stuff to keep it fun, and then a kind of payoff system. Now Let's scroll back up. What I did here from the breakdown and the like the two breakdowns is I then started taking individual systems in this that I thought would work interestingly together. So that's where the mechanics come in. Tower placement, right? I'm gonna to want to place towers because it's a tower defense game. I'm gonna to want to manage and upgrade those towers. I'm gonna to want some basic level generation to keep it fresh and interesting. Then character classes. Now you can see here I've called this ambiguous. Now what do I mean by ambiguous? Well, I'm trying to think about how I could design classes that can use any skill or any tower and use them in different ways depending on what class that is, but have every class be able to interact with the same like skill set, basically. And that's where this comes in, towers and gear, or well, towers are gear or skills. So trying to figure out how I want to put my towers into place and how they're going to affect things. And then here, gear will affect towers. And finally, time equals payoff. This was me kind of thinking about if I wanted to add some incremental stuff, like a clicker game, like add some systems like that into it. But that's step one, right? I've broken down the rough design of the game, the mechanics, even came up with a fun little enemy with the help of a friendly viewer. We came up with the idea of boot spiders, you know, spiders that hide in your boot. And then an arachnophobia mode, so people don't have to deal with that. But moving on. <laughs> After this, I always go into the next step, which you'd think it's jumping straight into game design. Nope, the game design document isn't actually done yet. This is just a breakdown, right? This is the first layer of the game design document where I want to kind of detail out some of the rough things that I want to do. Now, usually what I'll also do here is at the very end, I will add a little section. Actually, let's uh, very quickly go and go to my DT farming simulator one so I can show this off. This is a little bit more put together. Genre, yet another cozy farming game with incremental mechanics. It's a god simulator, so instead of being a character, you are a floating hand that manages a little farm. These are the mechanics that I want to have. A rough breakdown of how the player wants to do things. Player is acting as a deity running a farm. They have to grow crops and take care of animals. And then these two sections. Things that I want to work on or improve at. So data management and storage and then pixel art. 
and then the tools that I want to use to handle the art, what game engine I want to use, and the sound. So as you can see here, Krito or A-Sprite for the art, uh, with me deciding pixel art, that's probably just going to be A-Sprite, the engine that I plan on using, and then JSFXR for all of my sound design, for all of the sound effects specifically. So that's the first level of things. But let's come to the next part of this. And this is in Obsidian. This is one of the reasons why I like the graphs so much in Obsidian. This is for the tower defense game. I first put all of the game functionalities, the things that I want to, like the certain functionalities that I want the game to have, or mechanics, tower placement, tower management, upgrades, level generation, character classes, towers of skills, gear and loot, incremental system of some kind, and crafting. And then I came over and I started slowly plotting out a little like game loop, right? So we've got the start menu, class selection. So you go from start and you start selecting your class. And then after you've selected your class, you go straight into the game, you start placing your towers. And then the wave, the wave starts. You beat enemies and you collect their loot and resources. You gain XP. And then after the wave starts, it ends. Then you can do some crafting, maybe apply some new skills if you've leveled up and then modify or get new towers afterwards. And then we loop all the way back around and we continue. And then after that, I was like, ah, oh, let's see how I want to do the classes, right? This is how I started breaking down the individual mechanics the classes. I wanted the archer, which has multiple projectiles, like buffs, right? So it can buff towers to have multiple projectiles. I wanted to do poisons on the archer, so some towers could do poisons, or it could have certain towers that already do that. And then more critical hits. Then you have the sorcerer for elemental damage, big blast attacks and debuffs or uh, crowd control. And then the paladin for defensive actions, blockades... Uh, and holy summons of some sort, right? Go real paladin with this. And then I came up with the idea of augments. This is why documents and stuff are really useful, because that made me sit there and go, ah, oh, how could I make it so everything can be ambiguous and interact with each other, but in different ways? Well, every class can use the same skill, right? So if a fireball tower exists, the archer, the sorcerer, and the paladin can all use it. But how are we going to make sure that it's affected in different ways depending on the class you're playing? Well, Skill trees will have augments, and those augments can be applied to towers to affect them in unique and various ways. Like the fireball for, well, the fireball tower for the sorcerer can have more AoE, right, more area of effect. Or for the archer, it could have multiple projectiles. And then maybe, you know, later down the line, if you are feeling like the scope is still small and you want to increase it, you could do combinations. AoE with more element or more projectiles or something along those lines. But that was the game design document I came up with for the tower defense game. Now, the deity farming simulator I started doing as well. And as you can see here, this is one of the reasons why I love this. Let's zoom in a little bit and go to the mechanics, right? I have all of my mechanics written down, including seasons and weather events and some interesting things. And then I started doing the game loop. And I was like, you start, you plant crops, you wait or do a thing, you harvest crops, you sell crops and buy more, and then you repeat. And I realized right here, the second step, Something was missing. Like, what's the time spender that you're going to be doing? What's the big deal, right? And, like, what, what, what's the other thing you do? Because you can't just plant crops and then wait, right? That's not really a game. Well, it is in some sense, but it's not fun. Not always. So I was like, what can you do? Well, let's add some mini games, Some time spenders. You look after some animals. You brush some sheep. You milk some cows. Or you could go fishing. And then I was like, oh, okay, that's awesome. Come down here. And then I design a section here so I can start kind of fleshing out these two little mini games. And after that, this is also really important. We went to tile management, how I plan on handling tile management. At first, I wanted to come up with what types of tile data needed to exist. But this is getting a bit too nitty gritty now. What I kind of wanted to show off more is the fact that this is game design documents, right? These are important things. Now, you're probably saying, I do this already, and you probably do. We've all sat there and... Uh, opened up a text document and started writing down ideas, right? Now, take those ideas, put them in a document like this, and then break it down more. Write your mechanics down, section them out, have a little breakdown of how the player should do things, what tools you plan on doing or using to make these things, and try this bit out specifically. Things to learn or work on. Because if you're not challenging yourself as a game dev, then you're not learning as well. And you want to keep learning. You want to be able to learn how to do many different types of systems. That way you can eventually design those dream games that we all want to design eventually, right? And uh, yeah, that, that's kind of what I wanted to show off. I just wanted to show off how functional and important game design documents can be and how 
you could use them to start really working on the projects you want to work on and use them as a learning source. Because guess what? These are saved. I save all of my design documents so I can go back on them and be like, oh yeah, I remember this mechanic. I remember designing this. I want to re-implement it again. Or I've came up with an idea like this. Now, not all of these games get made, of course, but that's okay. Every game developer has a game design graveyard. <laughs> anyway, that's kind of all I have. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope this has kind of helped. I hope this has given you some fun ideas to work on in the future. And yeah, I hope you're having a great day and a great game dev journey. And I will see you in the next video.